I want to show you today how you can go about drawing a white dog on white paper. A lot of people seem to feel apprehensive about drawing white fur, so I'm going to show you step by step how to draw this dog. But before I jump into it, my name's Gemma and I want to help you improve your drawing skills. If it's your first time here, don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. All I've done so far is sketch out my proportions and now I'm moving on to using this tool which is an embossing tool. This tool is used for marking out any little whiskers that you want to stay a crisp white. Basically what it is, is a little stick with a little metal ball on the end and as you push this into the paper it creates a little dent in the paper that stops the pencil from meeting as easily that part of the paper and as a result you can just draw on the paper and it leaves the whiskers you've marked in blank. Now that I've got those whiskers marked in, I'm just going to speed through drawing the dog's eyes, nose and mouth. I'm not going to talk you through every single step of this part, partly because I want this video to primarily be about white fur, but also I will shortly be doing some videos on how to do each of these parts of a dog's face, so do keep an eye out. That said, as a general rule, whenever I'm working with colour pencil, I like to start at the lightest colour, work my way down to the darkest and then go back up to the lightest, and I've got a couple of reasons for working this way. Firstly, because once you start with a dark colour, you can't go over it with a light colour. So by putting down the light colours first, I can kind of see a bit of a framework around the dark colour that I'm going to be using, and it means that I'm able to make that more accurate. And secondly, it is a good way to layer up your colours. With colour pencil drawing, when you layer up, you're creating extra depth. Colour pencil drawing is all about layering. You'll see that when we get into drawing the white fair, still following the same rule of starting from light, working up to dark and back to light, so that I can create lots of texture and layers of the fur. Now the first thing to think about when you're selecting colours for white fur is that white fur isn't actually white, or what you see isn't actually white. What you're really seeing is generally a series of greys that are created from shadows either large shadows created on the dog's face or by little shadows created by strands or clumps of hair. So what we need to do is draw those shadows and then we will have a drawing of a white dog. That said, it's not only greys that you can see on a white dog's fur. Because white is quite reflective, you tend to get a number of other colours. For example, on this dog that I'm drawing, there is quite a prominent blue reflection above the dog's nose. So we will draw that in as well. Last thing to think about before we get started is a lot of dogs that again we think of as white dogs are actually very light cream. So as I'm drawing the fur I need to bear that in mind and keep an eye out for any cream fur. So with all that in mind I'm going to start by using a very light grey. I'm using the Polychromos Warm Grey one. And I'm going to start trying to get some initial hair strokes down and start building a framework. Now to do this, I'm making sure that my pencil is very sharp. I like to use the Swordfish pencil sharpener, but any decent pencil sharpener that you can get a good point on will work excellently. I have popped a link in the description so you can see the specific pencil sharpener that I use. And to create these hair strokes, I'm working in soft flicking motions and I'm always making sure I go in the direction of the hair. Keep a close eye on the direction of the hair because it doesn't all go straight up in one direction. There's parts where it curves around the eye and it has a kind of flick on the cheek as well. And then it goes a little bit in all sorts of random directions under the dog's chin. So if you're drawing from a reference photo, which I highly recommend, make sure you keep a close eye on the direction of that fur. And even at this early point, I'm looking at areas where it's a little bit lighter or a little bit darker and going a little bit heavier with the pencil or a little bit lighter depending on what I can see in my reference. But the good thing with this is because it is a very light colour I don't need to be too concerned if I do anything wrong at this point because it will be so easy to cover up. Now I've got that first very lightest grey down I'm going to move on to a tiny bit darker grey. I'm using the Polychromos Warm Grey 3. And I'm doing exactly the same as I was with the previous colour. 
I'm making sure that I go a little bit darker on areas that I can see are a little bit darker. And there are a couple of areas that are bright white on the dog that I am going to steer clear of with this pencil. Now it is very faint, but you can kind of start to see what building up these colors is doing. Now before I continue working through my greys, looking at my reference photo, I can see almost a little bit of orange in there, kind of creamy orange. And if I compare my reference photo to my swatches, I can see that the closest match I have for this is the burnt ochre. So I'm going to very lightly make little strokes with this burnt ochre color on the areas that I can see in the reference photo. And you can see how subtle this is. Whilst on the subject of what I can see in my reference photo, as strange as it may seem, I can see some blue in there because as I said earlier, white fur is very reflective and if you can see it, you should draw it. So I'm popping a bit of blue, particularly over the top of the dog's nose here. And then there's a little bit under his ear as well. Something I frequently see people doing is not using the colors that they can see because your brain says, well, dogs aren't blue. So you think you shouldn't use blue, but if you can see it, you should absolutely draw it. If you don't add in these colors, then your drawing will end up looking a bit flat. And by adding in these colors, it looks much more vibrant. I'm just going to speed through and add some different pinks and reds just to start filling in the ears. And then I'm going to add to the gray with the warm gray four now. And I'm still doing this in exactly the same way as I did with the previous greys, just building up that color and only doing more of the darkest parts now. And you can see as I work my way up through the colors, how I'm using the darker colors less and less in comparison to how much I was using the lighter colors. Now I find as I get further into the drawing and I'm building up my layers, it's easier to see what colors are missing in comparison to the reference. So I can see here that I'm doing well building up all of my greys, but it's a little bit kind of creamier than I've drawn so far. So I'm going to add a little bit of ivory, more of a glaze as opposed to working in flicking motions. And I'm just gently putting this color over the top. I'm now moving on to the darkest gray, which is warm gray six. And I'm using this color very sparingly. I'm particularly focusing on around the dog's nose. There's a few details that I'm adding around the dog's eyes and then a little bit on the ears, but on the most part, that's the only places I'm using it. I'm gonna add a couple more colors around the dog's eyes and mouth, particularly a few browns. And then I'm gonna work back down through my colors, exactly the same colors I've already used, just making them all a bit bolder and a bit brighter. And as I get towards the end of building up back to the lighter colors, I can start to see a bit clearer if there's any darker sections that I want to add around the nose and mouth and I can add to those accordingly. I'm just about finished with this now. So remember, build up your layers slowly and gradually, use soft flicking motions that go in the direction of the hair and draw the shadows rather than trying to draw the highlights. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then give it a like and don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. Happy drawing guys, I'll see you in the next one.